time to look back. We also realize how much ground we have covered over the past 30 years. Along this journey, if there is one characteristic that has continued to define us, it has been our resilience. The resilience that allow us to get up stronger every time we take a hit. The resilience that drives our belief in the nation we call our Matrubhumi. And the resilience that gives us the passion to follow our dreams. And I will touch upon each of this today. As all of you are aware, on the eve of Republic Day this year, a US based short seller published a report to short our stocks. Just as we are planning to launch the largest follow on public offering in India's history. The report was a combination of a targeted misinformation and discredited allegations, the majority of them dating from 2004 to 2015. They were all settled by appropriate authorities at that time. This report was a deliberate and a malicious attempt aimed at damaging our reputations and generating profits through a short term drive down on our stock prices. Subsequently, despite a fully subscribed FPO, we decided to withdraw and return the money to our investors to protect their interest. While we promptly issue a comprehensive rebuttal, various vested interests try to exploit the claims made by the short seller. These entities encouraged and promoted a false narratives across various news and a social media platforms. Consequently, the Honorable Supreme Court of India constituted an expert committee to look into this matter. The committee included individuals known for their independence and integrity. The report of the expert committee was made public in May 2023. The expert committee did not find any regulatory failure. The committee's report not only observed that the mitigating measures undertaken by your company helped rebuild confidence, but also cited that there were credible charges of targeted destabilization of the Indian markets. It also confirmed the quality of our group's disclosures and found no instance of any breach. While SEBI is still to submit its report, we remain confident of our governance 
and disclosure standards. It is my commitment that we will continue to strive to keep improving this every single day. Our track records speaks for itself and I am grateful for the support our stakeholders have shown as we went through these challenges. It is worth noting that even during this crisis, not only did we raise a several billions from international investors, but also that no credit agencies in India or abroad cut any of our ratings. This is the strongest validation of the belief that the investors have in your company's governance and capital allocation practices. Over the past decade, one statement that I have repeated dozens of times is my belief in the future of the nation we call our Matrubhumi. Let me try and set some context. Today, there can be no denying that the world is continuing to be hit by multiple shocks, be it the climate emergency, geopolitical challenges, supply chain and energy volatility, or a persistent inflation. We, we have never had a time when such events were happening simultaneously without a clear solution in sight. Add to these opportunities and challenges because of the technological revolutions, especially the breathtaking advances in artificial intelligence. And what we have is a massive potential reset in the existing global operating models, the future of work, the future of learning, the future of medicine, and in some ways, the future of economic growth itself will need to be reset. Therefore, as we end one financial year and begin another, it is important to take a step back and assess the global situation and India's position as part of this landscape. While economic cycles are getting increasingly hard to forecast, there is a little doubt that India already world's fifth large economy will become the world third largest economy well before 2030 and thereafter the world's second largest economy by 2050. It is well understood that for any economy to implement policy and lay the foundation of growth, a stable government is critical. And we have seen this impact with the implementation of a several structural reforms that are critical for a strong, sustainable, and a balanced growth. This stability coupled with India's demographics 
and a continued expansion of our internal demand is a potent combination. Our nation's demographic dividend is expected to drive consumptions and accelerate the growth of a tax-paying society at a record pace. The United Nations Population Fund projects that India's median age will be just 38 years even in 2050. Over this period, India's population is expected to grow by approximately 15% to 1.6 billion, but the per capita income will accelerate by over 700% to about 16,000 US dollars. On a purchasing power parity basis, this per capita metric will be three to four times higher. And we have the statistics to prove it. Following our independence, it took us 58 years to get to our first trillion dollars of GDP. 12 years to get the next trillion and just five years for the third trillion. I anticipate that within the next decade, India will start adding a trillion dollar to its GDP every 18 months. This puts us on track to be a 25 to 30 trillion dollar economy by 2050.